Hey guys, Dower here, and I've got something to show you. I took my dormant oil floor that I picked up that I was going to put on the F-250. I elected not to, and I'm going to show you guys exactly why I didn't. Here's the dormant. See, I've cut it open. You can see the passages in here. These thicker passages are where the oil flows. These thinner passages are where the coolant flows in between. Do you see how thick these are in between? Now it turned out I already had one of the newer versions that just happened to get clogged up with sediment in my truck. Take a look at these again, are the oil passages. Got the oil passages here with the coolant passages clogged up in between. This is the reason that I have a coolant filter on my vehicle now. And over here I've got the two sections I've cut out. I just want you to take a look at these. Let me put them actually kind of back to back here and show you this. There you go, line them up. The Ford has got wider coolant passages with thinner aluminum between them, which means it's going to cool better. It's got thicker coolant passages for the coolant to actually flow in between. They're much wider. You see here, you see, notice how all of this space is just taken up as a big, huge blob of aluminum there on the end that's not going to do much of anything, whereas the Ford cooler is much better built, and all available space, or more available space, I should say, is actually used for cooling capacity instead of just for, well, I guess, structural integrity. You can see the width of the coolant passage versus the width of the coolant passage on the Dorman. The uh, cooling fins are maybe point soldered, you know, soldered in specific points, but they're not fully soldered. Whereas, as you can see, I, I can't actually even move the forward ones. Comparing the cooling passages, you can see you've got much nicer passages on the Ford. It's going to be a much, much better cooling oil cooler. See these parts, they're actually just loose in there. They're kind of sitting there loosely. That's for actually down inside where the coolant flows. Coolant, coolant flows through here. You can see you've got, well, with the exception of some gunk in there from it being clogged up. You've got very well defined and well set up coolant passage blocks. And again, they're, none of them are loose or anything like that. This is a very well constructed oil cooler. Whereas on the Dorman, it's almost like an afterthought. And as you can see again, they're not well affixed. You can actually see gaps such as right there. It's just very poorly constructed. The bottom one's actually in nicely. So yeah, overall, I cannot recommend the Dorman. See again the height difference, which directly translates to less cooling efficiency. So there you go, there's my comparison. I'd say if you've got a vehicle that you just need to drive around and you're not towing or anything like that, the Dorman probably would work for you. The way I see it, as much work as it is to get down to that oil cooler, it's $200 that you're better off just go ahead and spending. I mean, I bought the Dorman, I had it sitting here, and I still said no. Uh-uh. As soon as I pulled my old oil cooler out and I got to look at what the new Ford style looks like, I said no. I, I called up Towsley. Ordered up a new one. It's like $290 roughly shipped over to me. And I put that right in. I did not put the doorman in there. I cut it up instead, you know, for science. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. Let me know what you think down below. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions or anything about the doorman cooler, let me know. I'm, I'm not going to throw this out or anything. I'm going to let it sit here um, so I can take more measurements or anything else you guys might need. Just uh, let me know.